This episode is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community and it's got thousands of inspiring classes for creative people or curious people and well, anybody. You can explore new skills, you can develop existing ones. I recently did a course on advanced video editing for Adobe Premiere Pro and even though I've been working in the program for years, there's still little things that I was able to pick up. Jordy, he's a YouTuber and a fantastic instructor. He was able to show me some things that I didn't know, things like how to edit properly with multicam setup. And he's got something from beginner level all the way up to advanced. Skillshare is an amazing place to help you keep learning. It's also got a fantastic creative community to support you along the way. Now, Skillshare is also offering the first 1,000 people out there watching this right now who click in the link in the description a free trial of Skillshare premium membership. After that, it's about 10 bucks a month, but you can go check out the courses, explore everything you want, and get started right away. So thank you, Skillshare, for the sponsorship, and enjoy the episode. Yeah, no, the sport's changed incredibly in like the last 35, 40 years. I mean, when I first started climbing, sport climbing didn't exist really in the UK. There were barely any climbing walls. Um, so most of the climbing was done outside and it was traditional climbing. Um, well, I suppose I fell in sort of with a group of climbers in Sheffield in the sort of uh, early 80s. And they were some of the best sort of climbers in the UK at the time. And so, yeah, we, we just went climbing together. Um, and you know, worked our way through all the sort of old hard routes and then started doing new routes of our own. I think the first time I looked at Hubble was probably in 1988 or something, just after Andy had free climbed it with the sort of eight points at the start. And I thought, yeah, maybe would go, but it'd be really, really hard. And then it um, wasn't until, I think, 1990 that I started trying it seriously. Um, and in fact, yeah, I did it reasonably quickly, actually, in the end, it was about 10 days or something. Yeah, it felt good. I mean, because it went, you know, because I did it, reasonably quite well quite quickly really 10 days wasn't wasn't that long I mean I knew it was significantly harder than other routes I'd done like Agincourt or Maginot Line or whatever you know because it was really bouldery and had really hard moves and everything but I suppose it was the type of type of route that if you had the sort of strength to do it you might do it quite quickly um, so yeah I certainly didn't sort of think I'd done anything super significant straight away um, well, not for sort of a couple of years, really, um, when I sort of really started to realise, you know, how hard it was. I'm Buster. I'm a professional climber, a climbing coach. Yeah, so I started climbing like 13 years ago. As a kid, I went on like some like walking holidays up to the Lake District with my family and I saw some guys like climbing. I thought it was really cool. I wanted to be a climber. Came back, uh, came back home and had like a birthday party at the local sort of university, the University of Hertfordshire. 
and then yeah, I was like really psyched straight away. I think if you'd have like told the like ten year old me that I would have, was like would have met Ben Moon, I would go climbing with him, I'd be sponsored by Moon, I think I'd be pretty excited. So yeah, it was cool to meet him. He's been like really supportive of my climbing. He's obviously like a, a hero, like one of the biggest legends in climbing. So I used to be like more of an endurance climber, like a competition climber, really fit nice and efficient but not very strong so I never actually saw Hubble as something that I would do. It was only when I came to Sheffield and started training on the board and really like working on those weaknesses and like getting strong where I actually like thought it was something I could do but then before that it was just like a dream and yeah. So Hubble was like a, a pretty short, short climb. So it's over in maybe six moves. And then you've got maybe like a 70 plus to the top. Really like burly climbing on undercuts, small edges, your feet are really high. So you need a lot of core strength, a lot of finger strength and to find the sort of correct body positions to make these really powerful positions possible and to make them easier. It's at this like beautiful crag in the Peak District called Raventor. Really savage style of climbing there. You've got to have like a high tolerance to pain, strong fingers, and basically try really hard. You've got to like put the time in. It doesn't matter who you are, but you've got to put the time in and learn to move there. And yeah, just suck it up. Your ego will get beaten down, but you've got to like keep trying kind of thing. How did the discussion come about to change the grade of Hubble? Well, I haven't changed the grade of Hubble. Uh, I mean, it just, I suppose, um, I mean, Adam Ondra had a couple of, has had a few, had a few, been over here on a few trips and he's tried Hubble and he's, and I think he said it's definitely 9A. Um, and I suppose the BMC, they gave it 9A in the, in the new guidebook. My, from 8C was around about sort of the maximum level that had been climbed in 1990 when I did Hubble. So to sort of jump two grades and give it 9A would have been a bit, well, <laughs> a little bit arrogant maybe. Um, so yeah, it seemed obvious to give it AC plus. I mean, it seemed a pretty big deal to give it AC plus to be honest, because there weren't any AC pluses around. I mean, you can argue till the cows come home about what kind of grade it, it is. Um, but I don't think, well, to be honest, I don't think many people would, would have argued with 9A. I mean, Alex Magos, he's, I mean, he's, I think he's sort of doesn't want to say that it's 9A because obviously then that would take away, you know, the first 9A from Wolfgang's route. Um, but apart from Alex, I think, yeah, I don't think, I don't know anyone who would say it's not 9A, to be honest. When did Buster come to you and tell you that he wanted to climb Hubble? Um, well, he didn't really. Um, didn't come and tell me that he wanted to climb Hubble, but yeah, I'd have thought most sort of self-respecting uh, <laughs> top rock climbers would want to climb Hubble. <laughs> so I kind of take it for granted.
Hannah. Oh, nice yeah, one. Yeah. That was so sketchy, wasn't it? Like, yeah, with the, the with rope the leg over your leg and stuff. Oh, nice. Yeah, it feels good, man. It's a classic piece of history there. There was a brief moment when I hit that thing and got the drugs. I was like, oh, wow, like I'm here. But then after that, it was just like over gripping, probably pulling way too hard, like super stressed. It's like, oh, I can't drop it now. But yeah, there, there's not, there wasn't really anything in my head. I felt pretty blank apart from like when you're on a good hold, because that's almost like a time to think, because the rest of the time it's like too involved to think about what you're doing. I mean, I didn't get much sleep last night. It felt like Christmas Eve, like I was too psyched to sleep. I was just like thinking about getting out here. First 8C plus, first 9A in the world. It's pretty cool. Right, I hope you enjoy that episode. It was a lot of fun for me to make this one. I gotta thank Buster, I gotta thank Ben uh, for being involved, Ben Pritchard for some of the extra footage from back in the day. Uh, if you like this one, like it, share it with somebody else, subscribe, that helps me out. Uh, thank you Skillshare for sponsoring the episode again. You can click the link down below and get a free trial of that. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.